what if you could make so much that you could give away a million dollars a year to people that were less fortunate than you? What if? What would your life be like then? Would that be fulfilling? So if you can make your vision and your dream and your day-to-day activities about something bigger than just you, it's going to free you up to set humongous goals. Hey, what's up? It's Aaron LeBauer, and welcome back to the Cash PT Lunch Hour Podcast. On today's episode, I want to talk to you about something uh, a little bit different, um, but these are the top seven, really, I think, like, now I have eight. So these are the top eight mistakes most PT business owners make. Um, I don't always love talking about, like, the negative things. Like, I want to tell you about, like, all the things you should be doing. But sometimes it just makes sense to talk to you about the things that you probably are doing and don't recognize it that are sabotaging your success. So let me just move my things around. So this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the top eight, but probably nine mistakes PT business owners are making. And so before we get into this episode, if you are watching this over on YouTube, please um, hit the uh, like um, subscribe and uh, click the little notification bell so you can you know, get uh, notified of the next episodes and other videos that we put out on a regular basis. Also, I would greatly appreciate it if as we go along, you put a comment below in the comments, in the chat, whether this is on social media, YouTube, and somewhere else, um, and let me know what uh, was insightful for you about this, what was helpful for you about this, or maybe tag a friend and share it. Because uh, the more you comment and like, the more this is, these videos are going to show to other people, to our colleagues, just like you who need to hear this message. So, um, all right, here they are, the top eight mistakes PT business owners make. And there's a lot of other mistakes. I was just like, oh, here's five. And I was like, wait a minute, I can't not talk about this one. I got to talk about that one. Um, number one mistake most PT business owners make is not having a clear goals and a clear why. You know, what's interesting is that people come to me and think, Aaron, you know, I'm interested in your Platinum Mastermind group and I'm, I'm starting a business, or I'm, but I'm actually thinking about, you know, maybe partnering with someone else. Like, <laughs> if you're undecided, like maybe right now is not the best time to start a business, but maybe actually it is. You just don't know why this is important to you. You don't have clear goals about what you want in five years. Like, where do you want to be in the next five years? Let's just say we start working together. Like, you're like, hey, Aaron, you know, I want you to coach me. I want you to do, you're like, we start working together and I do everything I can. I give you everything you need to help you get results. Okay, fast forward five years from now. We're sitting in a coffee shop. We're chatting. <laughs> Maybe it's the first time we've ever met. Maybe we've met multiple times in person, you know, because I got a lot of people right now who are, you know, we're only doing, like since the pandemic, we haven't actually been meeting in person uh, for coaching. But maybe we have. So we're sitting there drinking our latte, our double mocha, half-calf frappuccino, tall, <laughs> grande. Looking back on those five years, like you're, you're in a place right now where just everything, you're just crushing it. You're like, everything's amazing. Like you've got a business in the life of your dreams. So looking back over those five years, tell me, What's happened in your life personally and professionally for you to feel happy with your progress and satisfied with your results? Now, if you want to like pause real quick and jot some things down or pull out a piece of paper and jot these things down, I want to know, or actually, I don't really care to know yet. I just want you to know. What is it that you want? Where do you want to be in five years? Because if you don't know where you're going, you're never going to get there. And that's one of the big reasons people stay stuck on the fence and they use money as an excuse, or my spouse is an excuse, or time, I don't have time, or this isn't, they don't ever say, you know, Aaron, you know what, I don't actually know what I want, I'm not clear on my goals and why this is important to me. I don't know, what are your goals? Like, how much money do you want to have? How much money do you want to have for retirement? Like, what would be, and think big, what would be generational wealth for your kids? What, what amount of wealth could you pass down to your kids where, you know, maybe you've got real estate, stocks, investments, 
some other things you can pass down to them. What are your goals? What, what do you need to have happen 10 years from now when you retire? How much time do you want to be working? Really? So how much time during the week do you want to be working? How much time do you want to spend with your kids? So think about this in time, income, and impact. How many people do you want to help every week? Like personally, in your business, and then maybe in the world. Like how many people is it is a meaningful number? Is 100 people a month or a year? Is that meaningful? It's absolutely meaningful to the 100 people you just helped. But if you can help 100, why can't you help 1,000? And if you could help 1,000, why couldn't you help 100,000? If you can help 100,000 people, why couldn't you impact millions? So what do you want to have happen in five years in terms of time, income, and impact? Just jot that stuff right down real quick. Like, what is it that you want? I want to have a million in the bank. Actually, 10 million in the bank. I want to have 10 million in investments in real estate and property. I want to help 100 million people avoid unnecessary surgery and expensive imaging. And I want to basically have all the time I want um, to be with my kids or play around in the garage with my vintage Vespa scooters or work out with kettlebells and go on a run, go on a date with my wife. I have uh, the time that I want. I want to work in my business, you know, two hours a week. I want to work on my business 25 hours a week. I want to be on vacation 81 days out of the year with my family. So if you don't have a clear goal and why, you're going to struggle because there's not going to be something that's going to motivate you to wake up every day and keep from hitting the snooze button and get up, get to work and go help people. So number two, Oh yeah, I see where two and six are the same. So it's making things perfect. I'm going to drop this out. Making things perfect and letting perfection drive your decision making. Okay, most physical therapists, myself included, were trained through school to get an A. There was a drive from the time you were probably in maybe fifth grade through grad school that you had to get an A. Like an A was perfect. Like, okay, B's get degrees, right? You have to be able to shift your mindset from like an academic mindset and away from an employee mindset. Like even as an employee, you might be like, or you have to meet this certain um, productivity standard, <laughs> which I don't know much about because I've never done that. Um, even when I was an employee, I don't know that I met the productivity standard. I, I exceeded productivity standards when the productivity standard was low in jobs like um, when I was a temp. Um, but that's a story for another day. But perfection drives your decision making and making it perfect is keeping you from taking action. So this is all, becoming an entrepreneur and having a successful business is all about imperfect action, but okay, imperfect action. Uh, it's not imperfect action, it's taking action when it's ready, when it's the minimum viable product, the MVP, or when it's 80% is good enough. You've heard me say that. It's get it done and get it out, and then you can go back and make improvements. Okay, get it started because if you don't get the job started, this like, let's say, get your website published or send that first email, even if it's not perfect, just get it going. Once you get the ball rolling, then you've got momentum and it's much easier to come back and make improvements, five, 10% improvements every year, or you can go around in a circle, kind of like you can go to your marketing systems, make a 3% improvement, go to the sales system, make a 3% improvement, go to your lead generation systems, make a small improvement. You're never going to be done working on your business and you're never going to be done making things better and refining things. But what is going to keep you from success is waiting until it's done to start. So stop waiting for it to be done. Get off the damn fence and just start walking. You don't have to run. You don't have to sprint. You just got to start walking. You just got to put the ball in play. You got to shoot. So my, one of my favorite quotes is the Wayne Gretzky quote that says, you miss 100% of the shots you never take. My dad says when we play golf, he says, never up, never in. So when you're putting a ball, if your ball starts downhill from the hole, if you can't get the ball at least to the hole or beyond, there's no chance of it ever going in. So if you, you hit a short shot, 
there's, it's never going to go in. So never up, never in. Okay. Stop making it perfect. Stop trying to make it perfect. Just drop it right now. I give you permission to just put something out that's going to be imperfect. Most people won't see your spelling mistake. I only get about two or three emails a year with spelling mistakes. Once I, before I started talking about it, uh, 80% is good enough, it was like every week, Aaron, you got a spelling mistake here. Aaron, you got a spelling mistake there. There's probably a spelling mistake. As you can see, even the way I started this episode, I was like, well, it's seven, no, it's eight, but no, nope, two of them are the same, so I just uh, made number two and six together. So it's really, like I said, there's eight mistakes most people make. But this one is so pervasive that I had it in there twice. So if that doesn't tell you something, um, stop making it perfect. Just keep on going or just get started. Okay, just, just imagine if Thomas Edison had stopped when he couldn't get the light bulb 100 times. It took him like a 1,000 tries probably. Okay, mistake number three is making it all about you. Okay, you have a fragile ego to protect. Your ego is trying to protect you. Your ego is going to keep you from success. So it's time to drop it. Okay? There's a lot of people out there that have a lot of success because of their ego. And there's some people that don't. Okay? Let me give you an example. I used to race bicycles. I was trying to make it as a pro. So we, you know, I was a category 1. We raced with the pros all the time. I spent some time in Europe. And then there were two instances where, well, there were many instances where the guys that were a little bit better than me <laughs> would kind of like ride me into the curb, really, um, check the bike, like try to, you know, like just trying to like make you sketchy and get you off their wheel. Um, had nothing nice to say. Even the guys from my hometown uh, when I was racing in San Francisco you know, I was on a, they, they were never nice to me. And we were out at a race in Wisconsin and they asked me to, you know, help hand up bottles to them. And, uh, because they were in the pro race and I was in like the, the category two race, or maybe that was before I was a category two, I was a three. They asked me to hand up bottles. And I was like, I was like, no, dude, I don't have time. I don't have the energy or the resources to do that for you. And they got mad at me because they're like, well, we've helped you. I'm like, you guys didn't help me at all. You weren't nice to me at all. But then I go to um, the next year, I got fourth place in a really big race at the same uh, event at Super Week. And uh, Jonas Carney, who was um, one of the guys who was the, probably the winningest uh, pro cyclist in the 90s and early 2000s, uh, came up and introduced himself to me. He was like, hey man, that was a great ride. Awesome ride. Another uh, event we were at, um, another guy in Pennsylvania, um, Eddie Gregus, who was former like U.S. champion, raced in Europe, like just came to like hang out with us. And he was like, "Hey, man, hey, you know," he introduced himself to myself and Colin. He's like, "Hey, guys, like these two, like just chat us up as we kind of ran into each other all summer long." And there were guys like that who have had success, and they have no ego. They've learned to drop their ego. And what's the difference? is because everyone else is like trying to prove themselves. So if you're trying to prove yourself, your ego is going to get in your way. If you don't feel like you've had success, your ego is going to keep you from doing it. How does this show up in a physical therapy business? Okay. You maybe own a business and you've got two or three employees and you're sitting there going, well, my employees or my contractors just aren't keeping their schedules full. I don't know how to help them keep their schedules full you know, I'm the one that sees 50 patients a week. They can't even get 25 people on their schedule. Okay. That's uh, one scenario. Another one is, um, how could I possibly bring on another employee when everyone's coming to see me? <laughs> you know, my patients won't want to go be seen by Dr. Nielsen. Well, that's false too. These are false narratives in your head. They're keeping you from success. Okay, and, you know, you might be thinking, like, like, I can do this. Like, I'm smart enough. You might be right. But if it's all about you and your vision, the other way it shows up is, like, 
when we talked about having clear goals and why, you know, how much do I want to make? And many of you might be thinking, well, I don't want to make that much. I don't need that much. Okay. What if you could make so much that you could give away a million dollars a year to people that were less fortunate than you? What if? What would your life be like then? Would that be fulfilling? So if you can make your vision and your dream and your day-to-day -day activities about something bigger than just you, it's going to free you up to set humongous goals. Like, like I said, like I've had plenty of patients who were like, well, Dr. LeBauer, I came here to see you. I'm like, but Dr. Nielsen or Dr. Shelton or Dr. Herzog are the specialist in what you need in the phase of care you're in. So I'm going to have you see them next week. And they love these guys. And they were like, none of them started working with me more than uh, eight months out of school. I think Tyler started eight months out of school. Or maybe that's when he applies, you know, he applied six months out of school to come work with us in our cash PT residency. This is so much bigger than you that you have to stop making it about you and don't let your ego protect you because you got to you got to teach your ego that this is a different game. You're playing as a business owner, you're playing a very different game. You don't need to be protected. You need to be encouraged. So that's what I'm here to do is encourage you to step outside your comfort zone and just keep moving. Okay. Number 4. Not being in a community Do you live somewhere where you're like, hey, Aaron, there's no cash practices. There's no cash PTs around here. Like, this is great. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Even if there were, maybe you live somewhere like Greensboro, where there's like five or six cash practices now. You're like, oh my gosh, they're my competition. I can't hang out with them. <laughs> right? That's what your ego is telling you. So who are you going to go to when you have a question and you're struggling? Are you going to go to your, your spouse, your, your family members who don't understand business? Who are going to be like, you talk business all the time. You don't have a, because you don't have a community of people to relate to who are doing exactly what you're doing. You're, you're the average of the five people you spend time with the most. So if there are people in your lives who are naysayers and haters and they're all like negative Nancy's and whatever you want to call them. They just, maybe they, maybe they're, you know, not business owners and they don't know your mindset and they don't know your goals and your, your tolerance for risk. They're trying to protect you too. You need to be around people who are doing what you're doing. And if you're not in a community and you're not working with people, you're not spending time with people who can work together with you and encourage you and bounce ideas off of you then you're going to struggle. And, you know, so shout out to uh, two people, Greg Todd and Urson Religioso. Urson, I got Urson's shirt on today for Modern Manual Therapy. Um, and Greg and Urson and I, like, it's not the three of us. It's like, you know, there's, I basically, for the last five years, uh, you know, like Greg and I do a lot of things together. We get on, we'll get on a phone call once every couple months, um, you know, and just chat and help each other. Same with myself and Urson. Urson, I met Urson in a very different way. He's got a um, he's got a cash practice, but primarily he's got a um, online education company, Modern Manual Therapy. He sells products, uh, physical products, and teaches courses. And we connect once every you know four to six weeks. Uh, we hop on a Zoom. We've been on each other's podcasts multiple times. And I've got a community um, of people that uh, you know, like I belong to. I also belong to a mastermind. I also belong to uh, Taki Moore's Black Belt Mastermind, a group of other coaches. This is a mastermind for coaches. I've been in that for over a year, and I've got a coach myself, uh, Bedros Koulian, who's been my coach for going on four years now. And these aren't the only coaches and mentors that I've used over the last I don't know, 10, 15 years. Um, Scott Van Niekirk, John Schumacher, Lewis Howes, um, I'm forgetting somebody, uh, you know, and, um, and it's just like, oh, like at my, my clinical instructor, Alan Ling, I mean, he's been huge. Bob Duvall from Sports Medicine in Atlanta was a huge uh, mentor to me um, in PT school. You know, John Barnes, um, I did a lot of training with John, uh, learning myofascial release and becoming an, like a, an assistant instructor through his seminars and um, teaching people and leading study groups. 
I've had lots of mentors and put myself, I always, when I go to a conference or an event, I want to be the low man on the totem pole because I know I can learn something. It's success leaves clues. These are like crumbs that you get just from hanging out with people that are more successful than, than you. So you need to be in a community around people that are doing what you're doing and be in communities with people that are more successful than you. Be around people that have already been down the path you want to go. And it's impossible to find that community if you don't have clear goals and you don't know why this is important. Okay, number five. Number five, big mistake most PT business owners make. And the reason they make this is because they don't have vision about what's going on in their business. I'm sure you've felt like this many times. I need more new patients. Aaron, I just need more new patients. I need more new patients fast. I want a consistent stream of new patients, okay? <laughs> Always focusing on getting more new patients. Like, this is not the only problem in your business. It might feel like it's the problem. Where's that next person coming from? There's a lot of uncertainty in business. There's just a ton of it. Okay, where's that next? If I only knew when the next new patient was coming in. Okay, I can't remember exactly the statistic. Um, because if I thought if I thought it was vital that I knew the specific one and the resource, I would have looked it up before this. But it's not. But here's the deal. You're 70% more likely to convert uh, or do business with someone who's already done business with you in the past than you are to find a new person to do business with you. So I think you're like, it's like uh, you have a three or 5% chance of converting a new lead into a customer, but you have like a 67% chance of converting an existing customer into another purchase. So if you have an iPhone, how many times have you been back to the Apple store to buy something else? If you have a favorite restaurant, how many times have you been there? Isn't it easier to go to your favorite restaurant and order the same thing off the menu than to try a new menu item? But what if your, um, your waiter or waitress came to you and was like, we've got this special and it's amazing. Like, if you like the, you know, the T-bone steak, you're gonna love the ribeye, you know? Like, and they just sell it to you. You might be like, oh yeah, well, let's give that a try. It sounds amazing. Because you've got someone else to help you with it but you've already been there before. You trust them. You'll try something new. See, you've never been there before. Are you going to go out on a limb and try something? Like, it's so much harder. So what most of you, what you need to focus on is new patients. Yeah, let's figure out where the new patients are. But what's happening to the patients that are coming in? What's working? You probably need to focus on your sales processes, your systems, and nurturing your current and former patients and clients. The biggest gap and the reason I see this, and you probably don't, the biggest gap is in sales. There's two reasons you don't see this. Number one, sales is a dirty word. It's a four-letter word. Actually, it's it's actually five letters. But we're taught that we shouldn't be pushy. We shouldn't push. It's unethical to, you know, try to push a healthcare service onto someone. We don't want to coerce or convince someone to use PT. Well, sales is not about coercion and convincing and pushing. It's about asking the right questions. And number two. The other reason you just feel like you need more new patients is because, well, when a new patient comes in, you're like, sweet, I got a new patient. But as a, your business coach, think about me up in the helicopter above the trees. You're running through the forest, and I'm up in a helicopter, and I can see which way, the, you know, like, which way you should go. I can say, I can radio down to you and say, hey, Aaron, if you turn right, you're gonna 100 feet, you're gonna run off the cliff. If you go straight, you're gonna run through the forest for five miles. But if you just turn left and you go up about 55 feet, you'll find the highway. You just can't see it because you're down in the gully and it's up about 20 feet. You just got to go climb that rock face. It's going to be right there. It's going to take you about five minutes to get there. But you can't see it because you're in it. It's like what you're too close to the forest to see the trees. Isn't that the saying? And it feels like you need more new patients. But what you really need is to be able to take the people that are already coming in and have a proven offer, like a, in a proven path and a, pro, a proven pathway and value ladder to get them from being uh, interested to raising their hand to saying, hey, Dr. LeBauer, I need help to becoming a patient. And that's a sales process. And your systems for organizing and becoming efficient. How do you take a whole day off to work on your business, business and not just work in it? How do you move, get your, your other physical therapists who are working with you to be as efficient as you and busier than you? And then how do we find these existing patients who've been, who are loyal, 
happy customers and how do we get them to share their story with others so other people see like what you're doing and we cultivate word of mouth and get them to start coming in. There's some very few, uh, there's very few, there are a few um, very like effective, quick like scripts to call people. It's like, hey, Mrs. Jones, this is Dr. LeBauer. I just want to check on you. What progress have you made since your last visit? A lot of times Ms. Jones will say, oh, I'm doing amazing. Great, get, let's get her uh, to leave a testimonial. She might say, hey, you know what? My hip's been hurting for the last few weeks. It won't go away on itself. I was just thinking about you. I'd love to come in and set up a visit. Boom. There's so much, I mean, I was, my daughter and I were, um, selling vegetables and Rice Krispie treats at the farmer's market this week. And Rice Krispie treats from my idea, because I said, uh, I said, Elena, we only have, you know, so much vegetables. Um, Rice Krispie treats always sell out. Let's make some too. They're super easy. But within the first 30 minutes of being there, no less than two former patients came by and told me how amazing their experience was with me, how much they'd helped me, you know, like I'd help them, et cetera. And it was just like, oh, like all I got to do is tap into that. I've got thousands of people on our list. All I got to do is tap into that um, to generate more business. And we do. And I've got automated emails going out to everybody. And, you know, I've got the systems all set up. But you probably don't. And that's okay. But what we need to do is if you're struggling and going, I need more new patients. You've tried everything and nothing's working. We probably need to do and go back and look at your sales process, your systems, and uh, cultivating word of mouth. Okay, number six. The top reasons, the top mistakes most PT business owners make. They stop when they feel resistance. You stop what you're doing when it feels hard, when it gets hard. I can't tell you how much resistance I felt in 2020 and in 2021, but I know what it feels like when I'm in a growth pattern. Okay, when it hurts, when it hurts inside, when you kind of like get a little bit of like anxious, you're like, what is wrong? It's resistance. It's called resistance. When you tell yourself or that person on the shoulder tells you, hey, Aaron, you should do this. No, you shouldn't. And the other one says, no, you shouldn't. Right. That inner voice is saying you probably shouldn't do that. It's not safe. It's not safe to do to make that decision to spend that kind of money. That's not safe. Your your parents would tell you that's not a safe bet. Right. That's gambling. You're gambling with your money. This is resistance. You remember resistance, that inner voice is talking to you from a perspective of where you might have been 10 years ago, 20 years ago, even 40 years ago. Might be repeating things someone else has said to you, but is that person a business owner and are they more successful than you? Right? Is it me in your ear or is it like your brother in your ear who doesn't understand business? Okay, when you feel resistance, it's a sign you need to keep feel, moving forward. It's a sign that you're in a growth pattern and you just need to keep going one step at a time so you can move forward and grow and explode your growth. This exact thing happened to me this, this past year, this spring, in a huge way. We did PT BizCon. I thought it was amazing and successful. The 250 some people that joined us, I think did too. Um, but then within two, within four weeks after PT BizCon, um, I had a, uh, employee quit and another one, uh, another one we had to let go. Talk about major up and major down and a lot of resistance, but I knew that it was a opening of a door to another phase in my business and my business evolution. I knew it. I knew this is hard and this sucks right now, but I knew that's what it was. That's called resistance. And that was resistance in a major way. Maybe you're like thinking, well, maybe you're getting a little bit of resistance to something I've said or something I've just opened up for you in the way that uh, maybe I've, you know, called out something that you're having fears about or perfection or not having goals. Maybe there's a little resistance there. Or maybe you're like, God, Aaron just sends me too many emails and you're getting some resistance. Okay, great. All right. I don't like it when I don't like being sold to. I don't like going on. Aaron's webinar, and then at the end, he tries to sell me his course. Oh, that's called resistance. I mean, you've got two choices. You can either do what it's telling you or, or take a chance. I can't force you to do either of those, but I want you to recognize when you feel resistance. It's a sign of growth. It's a beginning of um, something new, and you need to keep moving forward. It's like walking through a, like a fog or think about like, 
what was it like in watching the movie Dune, right? When, when there's so much resistance in that movie, when there's so many unknowns, did they stop? You're flying through that big dust storm. Talk about resistance. Holy cow. Okay. Number seven, going it alone. Biggest mistake, going it alone. This is kind of a little bit of ego, right? I'm smart enough. I can figure this all out by myself. Yes, you can. You absolutely are smart enough. No one's saying just by getting help doesn't mean that you're not smart. It's kind of like asking for help is one of the bravest things you can do, and it's going to move you forward even faster. Okay. What was the, um, so asking for help, going it alone, right? Who do you know in your life <laughs> that goes it alone is successful? Like you, maybe you can go by yourself and you know what to do. You can get there quick, right? But together, we may not get there as fast, but we're going to go a lot further because we can help each other. Okay. Yes, you can figure it all out on your own. The thing that I like to say is that, well, you know, I don't need you to reinvent sliced bread. I just want you to take the sliced bread and make it better. Like, can you uh, figure out how to weigh, how to slice bread and put the peanut butter and jelly in each slice without the slices being opened? Can you inject the bread with some peanut butter and jelly, then slice it and have it ship out? I don't know. Make it be- make Don't reinvent the wheel. Make the wheel better. I would say maybe that's a better analogy because look at what Elon Musk is doing. He didn't reinvent the wheel. He didn't reinvent the car. He's just making it a whole lot better. Fully electric. Faster than pretty much anything else. Now Ford has all the, you know, like electric F-150. Okay? They're not trying to reinvent it. They're trying to make it better. Right? So going it alone. Like, yes, you can go in isolation. And you can do this. I know you can. There's hundreds of people told me, Aaron, I've been doing this for years. I'm like, okay, great. Okay? How many people have you helped along the way? Nobody. Okay. Someone said to me a few years ago, Aaron, I've been doing this for longer than you. Like, how can you teach people how to do this? <laughs> Talk about scarcity mindset. Okay. I'm going to say like, okay, why didn't you teach people? Why didn't you help others along? I'm not going it alone. Are you? Okay. Last one. I'm, I'm pausing. It's a pause. This is a not working with a coach. Yeah, that's right. Look, I'm a business. Uh, I'm a business coach. Okay, uh, what's that called? Uh, uh, you have to say like I, I declare that I'm. I have a vested interest in business coaches. But I can tell you this: Do you know a successful athlete that's never been coached? Every successful athlete you know was coached. Every successful athlete you know has had multiple coaches, even multiple coaches at the same time. They got a strength coach, they got a position coach, they got like a nutrition coach, they, you know, what else? I mean, to get out of PT school, you had professors, you had clinical instructors, you have coaches, they're coaches, they're coaching you along, help you become better. Well, actually, to get out of PT school, you just have to be competent in air quotes. Um, but once you get out of PT school, you go and do continuing ed, and you probably one of them resonates with you the most and you're like, oh my gosh, this one's great. And you go to that one multiple times and the person who teaches it is probably like your mentor or coach. And you become a great clinician, expert. You're like, I can regurgitate all the things that Aaron's forgot. Okay, cool. You can. All right. Why do you expect something different in business? PT school did not teach you to become a uh, successful business owner. Massage therapy school, on the other hand, I went for, it was a year-long program, two five-month semesters, 750 hours or 720 hours. Each semester, we had a business class to teach us about the business of massage therapy and how to, like, start our own massage therapy practice. Pretty incredible and a very distinct difference. PT school taught us um, how to, uh, we had a class that said, hey, take $250,000 loan, build out a 10,000 square foot facility and write a business plan. And we were like, "Um, we don't want a facility that's that big. Can we just do like 2,500 square feet? And can we take out a smaller loan, like 75,000? And the professor was like, no, you can't do that. We're like, what? So what we did is we built, we we mapped out the whole 10,000 square foot thing. We cordoned off our clinical practice section and we rented the rest out to like a shipping company or something like that. And they're going to pay us X per month. 
And they were so mad. But what I'm going to ask you this is, why do you think that business is different than everything else you've done? Okay, so what do you need to do about it? I don't care whether you work with me or not. There's all these other people trying to copy my courses and doing the same thing and you can go work with them. You know, that's totally cool. You know, maybe you feel like you need to learn something new and you don't want a physical therapist to teach you and you need to go find someone else or someone else just resonates best with you. I don't care. I really don't care because I know who I resonate with and I know there are people that resonate with me and the message that I share and the things that I'm doing and the mission I'm on and they're going to come and work with me and it's great. But you need to go find someone to help you or struggle on your own and maybe figure it out, maybe not. So it's not working with a coach is not a guarantee for success. And a good coach doesn't do things for you. A good coach helps you along the way, gives you tools, gives you a plan. And like I said, gives you help, right? And they help create a plan for you and they give you some tools. But a mastermind isn't just like, a weekly Zoom, that's not a mastermind. A mastermind is a community of people. It's got a coach, it's got a, um, you've got like a, a mission, and you meet together in person for two days, three times a year. And you meet uh, once a month to learn new strategies, what's working now in other people's businesses, and everyone in the mastermind shares what's working in their business and helps each other along. A great coach, doesn't just spend hours and hours of time with you walking you through and hold, walking you through the process and holding your hand. A great coach guides you, asks you the right questions, gets you to think and doesn't like and shows you where the water is but doesn't try to force you to drink and doesn't drink the water for you. Like I can't drink the water for you. I can't do this stuff for you. And the people that get the most success out of working with us are quick to ask for help. They're quick to take action and they're quick to share their wins and lessons. And the difference between me and the dozen people who've told me they've been doing this longer than me and why am I teaching it? Well, the difference is I share my wins and lessons. I share what's working. And that's all I've been doing. And hopefully um, me sharing what's working for me and other people I work with and the thoughts that I have, (laughs) you listening to this, means that you're getting something out of it. Even if you don't want to tell me about that, that's totally cool. But what I want you to understand is that there's these, these are the common mistakes people make. Probably if I had to drive it down to one thing, it was one or two things. It'd be not knowing why and, and having a reason to wake up at 5.30 a.m. every morning to get it done and your ego getting in your way of you being successful. And then probably the third thing would be not being around the right people. So if there's a few things that I do want you to do on a positive note, here's how you do it. Okay, these aren't nots. These are shoulds. These are you can do. Get clear on why this is what you want to do. Get a reason. Find your reason. Spend some time just thinking, reading books, going to seminars. I got clear on my why at a um, Lewis Howell's uh, event, Summit of Greatness. Know exactly why this is important to you, for you, your family, and the world. Right? So you got goals. I don't really, you don't have to goals, but it's really like, this is why I'm going to get up every morning and work out and then go to work. Find a group and community and a coach to help you, to give you, to help you with a plan, to give you the tools and to help you along the way. Because just because you have information now doesn't make you successful. Implementation is more important than information. So I guess maybe if there's a bonus one, it's going out and gathering all the information. Like there's a certain amount of information you have to gather, but eventually we just got to treat patients. We can't just be like, Mrs. Jones, hold on, sit here. Let me go research this condition for an hour. It's like, you just got to take what you know and do with it. And what we do in our Platinum Mastermind is when you get on the game plan call with me, what I'm looking for is that one thing that I can teach you or share with you or get you to do in that first like 30 days to get a positive ROI on your investment in me. I want you to get some quick wins. So for instance, Brandon Smith came into the mastermind about six months ago um, after asking me about it for months. Like on months he was on the fence and finally he's like, all right, I'm gonna do this. I was like, great. I was like, I want you to do this uh, promotion. He's like, really? I said, well, how much money do you wanna make? He's like, well, fair enough. I said, go do this promotion, send these emails. And he did and he made $40,000 in a week. 
Now, granted, he already had a business generating about three to five thousand dollars a month, but he didn't have consistent uh, systems and sales. And so, what I wanted to do is uh, get him some quick wins, so we could focus on building out the systems and processes and uh, sales systems and leveling up his offerings so that he could create a consistent uh, stream of revenue. And he just sent me a message about a couple days ago. He said, Aaron, by the end of the year, um, as this grows, I should be around uh, $10,000 consistent uh, revenue from this uh, one offer that he has, which is dope as fuck, right? Like, wouldn't that be awesome if you could do something like that with your business? So what I want you to do right now is go brain dump all your ideas and then focus on the one thing that you know is going to make a massive improvement in your business in terms of impact, income, and time. And then uh, let me know what was most helpful for you about this. would appreciate a five-star rating review over on iTunes or a comment on YouTube. Um, or even just a private message. Uh, let me know what was most helpful for you about this, and we'll see you on the next episode. This is Aaron LeBauer, Cash PT Lunch Hour. Y'all have a great day. Go out there and crush it.